We're going to talk now about what is arguably one of the most misunderstood positions in all of jiu-jitsu, and we're going to go over what I find to be a very reliable form of escape. We're dealing now with a figure four body lock, or body triangle is more commonly known. So if I'm on my partner's back, and I have this body triangle, let's say I fall to the underside. If my foot is behind my partner's calf, this is a very strong position for me. If I bring it in front of the hip, this too is pretty good for me. If I bring my foot all the way across the far hip, you notice I really lose the ability to keep this figure four. I'm still on my partner's back, but my lock is quickly uh, breaking apart. So our goal as defenders should be to get our partner's legs in this formation. So if my partner is on my back now, locks up a tight figure four, gets our seatbelt grip and takes me to the underside. We hear far too often that um, it, is, it, it is critical that I bring my partner to the same side as her body trunk. And the thought is that it will create enough pressure that it forces my partner to open this lock. It's not really the, the way I like to attack things. Um, we're gonna look instead, uh, not just to force my partner to release, but to, to really untie the lock itself. So from this position, as always, we maintain this two-on-one on my partner's strangle arm. And now we're first gonna begin with this grip. Oftentimes we can just straighten our leg, and that straightening of the leg will remove the grip. When we can't, it's a good idea to get our second foot involved and secure grip on my partner's foot. Now from here, I keep my partner's foot in place and I look to remove it. I can either release, or in times where I have a reliable enough grip, I then pummel my top foot to the inside and start bringing it behind my partner's foot. So from here, I first look to remove, and now once I do, I bring my foot behind. But we're not out yet. Now it's my second knee that needs to get past my partner's foot. I use my top knee to start pulling it across while walking my second knee behind. As soon as this happens, it becomes quite easy to start facing my hips toward the ceiling. And now we're almost out. Now from here, we wanna make sure we don't get mounted, so we frame across our partner's waist. As she looks to return to top position, I begin by turning away to ensure that I lock up three-quarter mount. Now from here, we win inside elbow position. We frame at our partner's bicep, and we secure a strong half guard position. Let's take another look. With my partner on my back and a figure four body lock, she takes seatbelt grip, and I get my two on one. Assuming she takes me to this underside, her foot is up on top, and there's no pressure on it whatsoever. No problem. I get my second foot involved. I break my partner's grip. I bring my top knee under, and now I bring my bottom knee under. As soon as this happens, I can face my hips toward the ceiling, get my head to the floor, and start getting my back to the floor. Now, we can well expect our partner's gonna try to climb to the top. As she does, we frame at the waist, we turn our hips away to make sure that we can trap the ankle, and now from here, as we win inside elbow position and trap my partner's knee, I make sure to win the inside tie on the bicep, win the underhook, and we're ready to work from our half guard. Let's take one final look. Let's face the swing up. My partner locks her figure four, gets her upper body grips, and we get our two on one. She takes us to the underside. We begin by breaking our partner's grip, pummeling our top knee under, pummeling our bottom knee under. Now from here, we work to get our head and back to the mat, and we begin to escape. As she looks to advance the mount, we frame, turn our hips away to trap our partner's ankle, we win inside elbow position, and we stop our partner's cross face. 
As we do, we place the knee on the floor, and we win our half guard position. <laughs> 